So let's start. So hello everyone again. Uh, this is the session for open source education track. And it's my pleasure to welcome here our speakers uh, who will share the insights uh, into how sessions are being selected uh, for a conference and what are the common mistakes that people usually make when submitting the talks. So if you want to know some tips on how to increase the chance that your next session uh, will be accepted, uh, you're at the right place. So before I will hand it over to Tomasz, uh, in case you will have any question during the session, uh, feel free to uh, use the Q&A section. But also, I would like to encourage you to fill the polls. You can see two polls. So if you can uh, fill them, we will be more than happy. And then I will be sharing the results. So now, Tomasz, it's yours. OK, thank you, Nara, for a very nice introduction. Uh, you've said it very well. So welcome all. And thank you for joining us. And sorry that you had to leave the coffee tasting. So we really appreciate it. It was an awesome session. Uh, so I really hope that at the end of this presentation, you'll know like how to write your titles and especially abstract for conferences so that your talks will be accepted. Uh, so my name is Tomáš uh, and I'm a speaker of many conferences such as DEF CONF or Red Hat Summit, Ansible Fest. And I also review talks for DEF CON CZ for past few years. And today, Slenka with me, which I'm, I'm really excited that we were, too, were able to do this presentation. So Lenny, please tell us something about yourself. Thanks, Tomasz, and hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Lenka Bocinseva, and uh, I'm more on the organizer side of the events. I'm also Red Hatter, where I organize many internal events and where I need to review many different talks. Uh, and sometimes we need to reject them. And so I hope that during this presentation we will give you some tips so we will we will not need to reject so many talks. <laughs> so so let's see what we can do about it. Um, but before we start, uh, as uh, Nora mentioned, uh, we have some questions for you because um, we were checking the attendees list and we could see some really experienced speakers um, on the list. But we would like to see if we have also some people who never submitted talk for the conference or, you know, like you are planning to do so. And the second question would be maybe curiosity for you. Like what percentage of talk do you think that get accepted for DEF CONF? We will um, get back to these uh, polls during the presentation. And now I will hand it over uh, to Tomáš uh, to tell us some uh, behind the scenes of the reviewing talks. Okay, uh, I'll do that. Uh, so actually this session, uh, I, I actually submitted this session for this year's DEFCONF as like uh, aftermath of reviewing many talks. Uh, so to give you guys a little bit of insight how it's being done. Uh, so as you know, conferences are driven around deadlines. There is a deadline for CFP. There is a deadline for announcing results and what will happen. And there's even more deadlines internally for us reviewers or even organizers to prepare the venue or, or have the first round of uh, like review so that we know like what's like what and where. And given these deadlines, we need to go through like hundreds of sessions. So for example, if you are staring at your monitor for a few hours, you are at your 100th session, like the fatigue is kicking in. So it's getting like really tiring at some point to read so many abstracts and get reading yet another talk about uh, GitOps or OpenShift. <laughs> so it's like, it can be really stressful, but thankfully we have a group of people who review each track. So this is specifically for DevConf CZ uh, I know that other conferences do it probably differently, but we usually have a track captain uh, who works with the organizer and the track committee, which is a group of people, and we review the track or the sessions for a track together. And then we have a prioritized list of talks you'd like to see on the conference. And I would say this is a very nice process where we discuss, uh, we talk together, we usually see like groups of talks which are similar so we try to pick one or two 
Uh, but at the end of the day, we always think about like what talks will be like best fit for the conference, uh, what talks will get most audience or like best uh, most questions. So this is like always on our mind, thinking about like what would be the best talk for this track, for this session. So if you have like talk which is very specific or or only like targets a small amount of people, it might not be accepted because we think that it like it wouldn't get many attendance. So those are some insights. We'll speak more uh, as the talk continues, and I'll hand it over to Leica. Yeah, thank you, Tomasz. And before we jump to the next slide, uh, just one question come to my mind. Uh, you, as a reviewer, do you somehow interact with people who are submitting talks for the conference? And maybe the people in the audience can give us also some experience that you have with, uh, with submitting the talk. Do you think oh, uh, oh, yeah. So I actually really like that on this year's DevConf, before the CFP started, we did an event where we did a Q&A for people who would like to speak. Uh, and there were a few people who joined and asked questions and had ideas for their sessions. So that was really great. And we were able to like tailor their ideas towards DevConf so that it would be a good fit for the conference. So I strongly encourage everyone to do this. Like when you have an idea for a talk before you submit it, like reach out to the organizers. And also usually like after the CFP is done, people are curious if their talk will be accepted or not. So they are like asking questions. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Tomasz. Uh, yeah, so, so now you know something about the reviewing process. And I would say that it, uh, it's similar when we are going to the conference and right, like picking the talks that we want to attend, right? We have here the DEF CON schedule in front of us. We have uh, many titles, many tracks, and there are so many talks. But the main difference uh, from the reviewer perspective is that the reviewer really need to go through many more submissions that actually ended up on the, on the schedule. Uh, and now um, I'm checking the, the poll of the results um, and we have uh, people who think that most of the people think that 35% uh, of talks get accepted for the DEF CON. Then there are seven votes uh, for 45% uh, get accepted um, and it's a little bit changing. Uh, and then uh, one vote for 55. And uh, you are actually right. Uh, right? Because uh, for this year DevConf, and I would say it might be also uh, for for a previous one, uh, it's only 35% talks uh, that usually get accepted. We received this year uh, around 400 submissions, um, which is uh, which only 140 talks get accepted. Uh, but when we have in-person events. So usually there is much more, the, the numbers of submissions is doubled, I would say even. And uh, so there is one simple thing that I guess, like when you are thinking about the title or about the abstract and your talk. So there are um, these, um, you can help the reviewers to do so and uh, improve the process of writing really good title and the abstract because this is how you sell yourself not just to the reviewers but also to the attendees and this simple question can help you to lead through the submissions right so really mention don't forget about what is the talk about the most really important thing then really mention for whom you are going to talk right for for whom it can be beneficial and the third thing the outcome. So what those people who will be attending your talk will learn from uh, from you, right? Um, so what you are promising them to learn. So if you if you keep this into your in your mind when you are thinking about the submission, I think uh, it will really improve the process. But uh, we will give you uh, many more tips. But before we uh, jump to it, um, I'm looking uh, if we have any questions in the q a section yeah i was checking it and we have none seems like we have very experienced crowd here 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I can I can see that many people have also uh, experience already with uh, submitting talks uh, to the conferences, which is really good. But we have some people also uh, who who never uh, never submitted talk for the conference. So so we are great. Uh, we are glad to see that. And now we can move to the next slide. So Tomasz, hand it over to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So if you have any ideas or tips, uh, please share that with us in chat so we can discuss. And at the end of the presentation, we should have a short Q&A. Uh, okay, so let's talk about five common mistakes we saw in this year's DEFCONF CZ submissions. And before I start talking about them, or we actually, uh, you can see that the example talk here is about growing bananas. And it was actually kind of a joke or like a placeholder I put in the slides, but Lenka found it really funny, so we stick to it. But originally we wanted to do like a real talk we would actually do. <laughs> so let's grow some bananas. And I guess the mistake number one is the length of the abstract. And here we can see both extremes. On the left side, the abstract is just one sentence. And as a reviewer, to be honest, I like to see these ones because they are like instant decline. Like there is nothing to review. We have no idea what the talk is about, so we can't judge it in any way. So th that's clear. And on the right side, uh, it's the exact opposite. It's that when someone writes like a small novel <laughs> about the talk, and it takes a lot of time to read it, process it, and trying to figure out what the talk is about. So I guess it's good because it means that the person who submitted really cares, but at the same time, it feels like overwhelming. So if the talk is meant to be overwhelming as well, I'm not sure if you want to have overwhelming talks. So it's really questionable. So the advice here is please write the abstract in, with the length, which is just right, like not too short, but also not too long. Uh, but I think Lenka has an idea here about long abstracts as well. Uh, yes, sometimes sometimes it happens that uh, people just put the link to the abstract and you know they, they expect that we will read their blog post, which is like pretty long as well. So avoid doing this, like replacing the abstract field uh, with your blog post because imagine 400. Uh, submissions in front of us, so uh, we don't have that much time to to go through this. So, uh, yeah, that's that's my advice here. <laughs> okay, thank you, Lenny. Okay, next bucket. Uh, here we are jumping about like quality of the submission, and the first part is about passwords and acronyms. So, if you think that your abstract is not catchy enough. So like you put some buzzwords in it and maybe even acronyms so that it looks pro. Yeah, it doesn't look pro. It's like it actually has the exact opposite effect. It just means that you are either lazy or we are not sure if the talk is like practical because here in DevConf, we are looking for very practical talks. We usually want sessions which are either about technology or some topic uh, and then people can really have some outcome from the session and start using the technology or the project right away. So if you have abstract full of buzzwords, it probably means it's not very practical. So we really don't like to see such talks here. And for acronyms, I mean, it's fine to use them in your abstract, but please explain them. Like if they are at least like not very common, uh, like if you think at least one person in the crowd wouldn't know them, please explain them like what they stand for. Uh, okay, more uh, speaking more about quality is about uh, like unclear titles or even abstracts. So the title is the most important thing of your talk. As Lenka showed earlier, when people are like browsing the schedule, they only see the title. And if the title is not catchy or like not clear, they will just like skip over and go to next one. So please take the extra time to think about the title. So it's like catchy but very clear and like it's, it's like few words about your session. And when when people open your 
uh, submission and start reading the, about the abstract. Like if you have grammar errors there or the structure is chaotic or unclear, uh, yeah, it doesn't like very, sell very well your session, especially for us, for reviewers. It just means that someone like wrote it very quickly and clicked send. So they probably didn't think about it much. Like he, advice here is uh, like you can use some tools to check the abstract, like for grammar errors or for like improve the grammar overall. Uh, and then maybe share it with your friends because that's what you end up doing anyway. You just write it down and send it to somewhere. You don't even know who is going to judge it, review it. But you know your friends, you know that they care about you. So if you share your, your session or title and abstract with them, they can give you like very good advices so that it's more clear, more understandable. And Lenka would like, I hope that Lenka would like to share some more tips uh, next. Sure thing. Yeah, so uh, we are moving a little bit from the bananas. We have uh, the kitty, everybody likes kitties, right? Uh, so, and this is important point of uh, when you are thinking about your submission, so really keep in mind what is the conference about and uh, do some research uh, when you are submitting the talk and what, what different tracks people have or, or the, the conference have. Because sometimes it happens that we see the, the abstract which is not really related to the conferences or we can see that people are putting it into the wrong track. And what happened when you put it into the wrong track is that, as Tomasz mentioned at the beginning, different people are assigned to the different tracks based on their knowledge. And um, for example, if you put it to the wrong track, that can mean that this person doesn't have that knowledge and they will automatically somehow skip this talk or, you know, uh, can be rejected because of this. So try to keep this uh, in your mind. And when you are not sure, so really contact the organizers and they are happy to help you. And the, the last common mistake that we have here is that really uh, you compete with others. We many times see the submissions on the same topic and we have like, uh, you know, like 10, 10 similar topics uh, for, for the same topic. So, so really keep in mind that um, you can group with some colleagues, for example, or friends, right? Ask them, hey, I'm going to talk about this, uh, this topic. Please, uh, maybe you can join me, uh, or maybe they are already planning to submit the similar topic so you can group with them. Uh, and uh, the other thing is also to research the other conferences, what people are talking about. Is there already some presentation on this topic? So maybe you can put a different point of view on that. So really, um, really focus on doing some research before the submitting. And uh, I think we are running out of the time, but we would like to just summarize some of the talks and show it on uh, one abstract that we can see. So um, really the length, as we mentioned, is really important and try to uh, try to be as short as possible, but answering all the important questions. Then invite the colleagues to present with you, right? As here in the example, there is Robert and Jane. I am with Tomáš today presenting. It's much easier for me to even present when I'm the new speaker. And the, the third thing, match the abstract with the title. Uh, that is really something that uh, is important. And Tomasz, the, the last three things. Okay, some more outcomes. Uh, so yeah, as Lenka said, please make sure that you are submitting your session for the right track. Uh, this happened for this year's DEFCON for plenty of talks that they were misplaced. So we had to put them in the correct track, but we might actually forgot some or did not understand the submission. So before you click submit, please read about the tracks so that you understand like what exactly is meant to be in them. If you are not clear, like you can always contact the organizers uh, of the conference. Also, as I said, if you are using some ac ac acronyms and then none, they are not very common, please explain them. And the most important thing, as Lenka said earlier, but I'd like to repeat it. So in your abstract, please make sure to describe what your talk is about 
who is the target audience, meaning like who is supposed to attend it, and finally, like what will that they get out of the talk, meaning what will what will be their takeaway. So when they finish uh, with your talk, like how will their life be better after seeing you speaking? And that's it. Uh, this is our session. We are right on time. I mean, <laughs> we couldn't even rehearse this. So thank you so much for all the comments in the chat. I wasn't even keep able to keep up reading them. And we can answer some questions now. Yes. So we have three uh, questions so far in the Q&A section. So let me uh, mention the first one. Uh, you mentioned that only 35% of submitted talks get, get accepted uh, for DEF CONF this year. Is this number common for other conferences or is it a specific for DEF CONF? And what does this number depend on? Uh, Lynn, do you like to answer it or should I? I can, uh, I can go. Uh, so I would say um, it's pretty common for the conferences to have this number uh, like 35. This is specific for DEF CONF. We have it in internal events as well, but this really depends on the structure of the event and how many uh, numbers of slots people have uh, on the schedule or organizers have. So, uh, so it can really vary. And uh, also it depends on the um, uh, number of submissions. I can see that during the virtual events, there is some virtual fatigue, so we can see like less uh, submissions. Um, but I would say the percentage is uh, pretty stable. So, Tomasz, do you have something to add? Maybe just to reiterate that uh, for popular topics, they receive so many talks that we cannot uh, accept all of them, only a handful for a specific uh, topic. So, for example, OpenShift. There are so many OpenShift talks being submitted for DevConf, and this is not OpenShiftCon, this is DevConf. So we only accept a like a dozen or a few dozens. So the rest needs to be declined. Uh, that's another reason. Mm -hmm. Thank you both very much. Another question. If we work on a very specific topic, how can we make a talk that is accepted? Bearing in mind that the audience is uh, likely to be small. Uh, I, I guess I can take that one. Uh, well, you can make it more introductory. So like if it's very specific and you know the audience will be small. Also, the question is like, is it worth for the small audience to like hear you talking or would it be better to write a blog post or maybe write some documentation and share it with the folks? But if you would like to speak about it, maybe make it more introductory so that you can attach a bigger crowd and maybe introduce the technique or, or, or the project to a bigger audience. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Another question, are the quality of the presentation or presenter skills taken, taken into the consideration to choose between similar submissions? Mm. Well, yeah, I can I, say, yeah, let me please okay. start. <laughs> okay, uh, so I would say that, um, so usually, uh, for example, for DEF CONF, we are really uh, encouraged the new speakers to, to submit the talks for the conferences, and we are taking it uh, into the consideration during the, during the reviewing process. But it doesn't mean that that's the only thing that we are looking at, right? If, uh, if your submission, your title and your abstract is really not telling us much. So, uh, you know, your skill level uh, is not something that will convince us. But if uh, we have, for example, a really experienced speaker there and uh, less experienced speaker, and we see that the submissions are really nicely written, both of them. So I would say that we can prioritize the, the one uh, that is with the, the, like the new speaker. But maybe, Tomasz, you can add something. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, I would say something similar that 
We actually also try to do blind review for DevConf that for the first week of reviewing, we don't even see the names of the speakers so that we really go for the quality of the submission and not for, yeah, this is from this person. We know uh, she's very good, so we are accepting her immediately. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And another question, can you share your views on blind versus non-blind CFPs? And would you have different recommendations uh, for submissions depending on whether the CFP is blind or not? Hmm. That's well, a good question, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't personally have an easy answer. Like I personally like blind CFPs uh, that we don't know who the speaker is so that we really go for the quality of the submission. Uh, yeah, I, I would say, yeah, most of the conferences, uh, we have the similar approach as you said, like we have a blind, blind one first. And then uh, we go to the, like check the, the speaker. So um but there are no like preferences because i guess each of these um, options have some pros and cons right so because sometimes it can say that hey i know this speaker from that conference uh and he like from last year for example but uh, and talking about the same topic so so we want to avoid this so the name can help but um yeah, I would say I don't have preferences. Uh, unfortunately, we are running out of the time, but we have another four, three uh, questions. So let me just put the last one and the others. Please just move to the uh, work adventure platform where you can discuss and continue discussion. So the last question, are there any uh, anti-patterns uh, that you find typical for frequent uh, submitters? Well, actually, uh, when we were doing the blind reviews for DevConf uh, the first week, I would always be able to recognize submission from Dan Walsh because he, he writes very short and straight to the point, very clear, speaking about containers. So I immediately knew, like, yeah, this is Dan Walsh. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't say it's anti-pattern. It's just like everyone has their own style of writing or like everyone is specific. And if you see someone submitting every year for a few years, you can already recognize the writing style or, or the way uh, the talk is submitted or, or the topic. Okay, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Unfortunately, the time is over. So please uh, move to the work adventure uh, to continue the discussion. And Lenny Tome, thank you very much for your presentation. It was great, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Nari, and thank you all for joining. Thank you so much. See you in the work and adventure. Yes, yeah, there.